I'm Maurice Robertson. This is the Tankwa Karoo, an arid, inhospitable region in South Africa, just three hours to the northeast of Cape Town. How I find myself here, well, that's a very interesting story that I'd like to share with you. I've been involved in television for over 20 years now as a presenter and producer. For the past 12 years, my focus has been on motoring, testing and reviewing the latest models, both locally and abroad. And as you can imagine, I do travel a lot with my work and uh, I've got to see some truly amazing places. But I think my love for traveling was instilled in me at a very young age by my parents. Uh, we got to enjoy some really amazing family holidays. There is no better way to discover yourself than to immerse yourself in other cultures, to meet the people and appreciate their ways, which more often than not are very different to your own. But there's also been a lot of positives. It's forced me to reevaluate what's important in my life. It's made me think laterally. And the forced time out has also given me time to upskill. But I think crucially, it's made us all realize just how interconnected we are and how we crave interaction, which is why I posted this on social media. You know, the times we live in, it's really hard to find something that we can all agree on, but I think I found it. 2020 sucks. Yeah, no arguments, eh? None of us, I think, saw this coming. It's been a complete sideswipe. And for me personally, it's been really, really difficult to remain positive, uh, to jump out of bed and think, yes, it's tackle another day. What it has done, though, is it has forced us to think out the box. And I think we've all realized that we are survivors and we are adaptable. But it's also made me appreciate the little things, things that maybe I've taken for granted. And for me, that was traveling. Um, I've been very blessed to explore a lot of our country and, and also travel a lot internationally. And the thing I love about it is I don't want to ever be a tourist. So you want to meet the locals. You want to get to understand what makes that little city, town or village unique, what is special about it. And it's scary because I actually don't know when I'm going to get on a plane and jet set overseas again. But I think there's a positive here. We live in the most unbelievable country. South Africa is so incredible. And it's always saddens me that I speak to tourists that come to South Africa and they've seen more of our country than so many of us have. So I'm wanting to do something a little bit different. Um, I'm wanting to get out of my wheelhouse. I'm wanting to unlock my soul because this need to get out there and explore is, uh, has been so suppressed for so long. I'm thinking of getting in the car and just getting on the road, destination unknown, and just see, I don't know, let's see where the mood takes me. Um, and I thought maybe you guys want to come along for the ride. So the idea is, tell me places that you think in South Africa are must-see places. I don't want the major cities. No Cape Town, no East London, Port Elizabeth, Durban, Johannesburg. I want places that are off the grid. So if you've got any suggestions, send me a message. Let me know where I should go. And uh, let's see if we can get this crazy idea from an idea onto the road, preferably gravel roads. And judging by the responses to my post, people were feeling the same way. Thank you, seriously, what an overwhelming response to my crazy idea to unlock South Africa and get on the road. Uh, a lot of the places that you've uh, suggested a place I've been to or they are on my hit list. Try not to fall in the water while I do this. Um, but also some interesting places that I literally had to Google. So that's exactly what I'm looking for. So thank you for that. So this is what I've decided to do. I want to get on the road in November. So before the crazy December period. And we're going to do 30 days. And try and see how many places we can get to. Once I've finalized a rough guideline of my route based on the places you've given me and suggested. I'm going to post that route. If it is in your town, your neighborhood, hook me up. 
meet up with us. Um, let's grab a beer. Tell me what makes your town so flippin' cool. Uh, I'd love to do that. Uh, a couple of other things I need to just have massive clarity on. If you follow me on social media, you know my family, my kids, are my three little dogs, Oscar, Jamie, and Mila. Um, I'm taking them with. Bugger that. Why must dad go and have fun? I want them to see and experience South Africa as well. So they are coming with 100%. I've got a lot to organize. I've got to think about the right car. Um, I also want to kind of, I don't want to be staying in B&Bs. I want to do it a little bit differently. So what I thought is crazy. Um, let's give myself an impossible task of, I don't know, a thousand rand a day. Fuel, food, accommodation. So uh, that means I... I might have to barter, and I certainly have to camp. <laughs> uh, I told you I'm going to be doing things a bit differently. Completely out of my comfort zone. Actually can't wait. Super excited. November's just around the corner. I've got work to do. The first thing I needed to secure, obviously, was a vehicle. Uh, crucial for a trip like this. Reliability. I probably am also going to need 4x4, or at least a lockable diff. And then space. You know, 30 days on the road with the three dogs is a long time. Okay, so happy days. Crucial to this being a success is having the right set of wheels. And I'm happy to tell you that my good friends at Isuzu have come to the party. Um, I've got some amazing memories with the brand. My first proper serious dune riding was in Namibia in the D-Max. wonderful story we told last year when they put the Arctic truck onto production line for the first time. What a special vehicle that was too. Now for the first time, their vehicle modifications have been brought onto a mainstream production line with Isuzu South Africa producing Arctic truck versions of their dependable D-Max pickup. Arctic to Africa, the Isuzu 8035 story, tracks the build from an idea to rolling off the line in Struendel and straight into its toughest test yet. And here she is, meet Susie, the range topping 300 LX with 4x4 and the 3 litre diesel is paired to a 6 speed manual transmission. Definitely with me for the long run. You know what I'm really starting to love about this epic adventure of mine is that it's taking on a really local flavour. We've got a locally manufactured vehicle and now it's kitted out with a locally manufactured tyre that also happens to be the OEM fitment spec on our Isuzu. This is Ryan Fasak here, good mate of ours. Um, Ryan, let me see the smile, I'm keeping my distance. So you really are living the brand. Continental on the track and when we're going off the beaten track we've got the general grabbers. Yeah, um, it's great to have both brands um, and this is our adventure brand. This is what we really enjoy going and playing off-road with. So we've been with Isuzu as OE Fitment since about 2007 um, and going back to the old World Contact 4x4, a 16-inch tire and then in 2015 we switched to the General Grabber brand, um, the 80 in this case and only this year did we fit our brand new Grabber 83 which is our, our latest generation 5050 all-terrain tire. So from a tyre perspective, quite hard to get it to do what you need it to do in both environments. A real challenge for a brand. You know, if you buy a vehicle that's got a 100% tar um, application tyre and you want to go off the beaten track, then there is some risk that you can damage your tyre, especially if you drive a lot of gravel and some hardcore 4x4. That tyre is not designed for that. Whereas a 50-50 gives you at least 50% off and 50% on-road. 
It's got good on-road manners, but off-road you're gonna have more than enough capability. A highway pattern tire has to have a much better rolling resistance, so it has to be lighter, which means it doesn't have the same type of structure. Whereas this tire has been beefed up a lot, significantly more, especially in the sidewall area. You'll be able to deflate your tire. Um, it's got strong, a stronger bead. So, and that obviously helps to keep the tire on the rim when you do need to deflate it. A manufacturer and a tire manufacturer, that relationship between OEM and fitment is crucial because you guys spend, it's like three years from development to end product to get that thing to work well on that particular vehicle. So in the case of Isuzu, a perfect example, their engineers are extremely methodical and diligent in the way that they develop their vehicle and together with us. There always has to be improvement, yeah. uh, not just in the vehicles as you know, but also in the tires. So, there will be a new challenge um, to try and match the vehicle's enhanced capabilities with a tire. So, of course, that's where we work together to try and make sure that they marry nicely together. In the case of the new Grabber 83, they said, guys, we want the comfort of our customers to be better. Ride comfort, noise comfort, it all has to be improved. So we work hand in hand to make sure that those developments make it onto the vehicle. And when they test them again, all the blocks need to be ticked. And that's why the tire that's fitted to the vehicle make sure that the vehicle's capabilities are perfectly matched to the tire. You fit something else, there's always going to be a compromise. My D-Max is ready to roll on General Grabbers. Looking forward to having it on for the ride. I know apparently Ryan's coming to join us uh, at some point on the trip. And uh, look, I, I know, I've, I've got a capable vehicle running on the right tires as fitted by you guys. So, it's going to be a good adventure. Thanks. It's so a great news. My ride was sorted, but I very quickly realized that heading on this epic adventure with a sleeping bag and a two-man tent just wasn't going to cut it. So I went back to social media asking for advice. Yeah, coffee for me is an absolute essential. And that got me thinking, what other things are going to be essential for my survival on this trip? Remembering I am... Um, yeah, I'm a little bit of a rookie when it comes to off the beaten track stuff and possibly camping out. So let me know what are the type of things that I need that are essential. And by essential, I don't mean like send me your partner for a 30 day breakaway. That's essential for you, but not for me. I need some genuine advice here. And the response, well, it was better than I could have imagined. So as I've said a few times now, camping and the rough stuff is not really my comfort zone. And I asked you guys to help us with things that are going to be essential to my survival on this epic trip. Well, the cool news is the guys from Front Runner picked up on my post on social media. And they said, you know what, Marius, we've been uh, living this way of life for many, many years, over 20 years now. We know a thing or two and we're pretty sure we're able to help you have a great time discovering South Africa. Let's see how they can help. This place is absolutely nuts. I mean, I just can't believe how well set up and geared up this uh, adventure lifestyle actually is. Um, I really wouldn't even know where to start. But what I've noticed here is, you know, my idea of camping was always, you know, a mission. What it looks like Front Run is geared up to do is make things as efficient as possible for you so you actually enjoy going off-road and they make it as practical for you, as comfortable for you as possible. But like I said, I wouldn't know where to start. I was warned that once I do this once, the bug is going to be bitten and then it's going to be a, a new way of life for me. But uh, Rano here at Front Run is going to show me what he thinks I need because this is what he does. Rano, how's it? Good morning, Marius. Let's do the... Yeah, just so you guys know, yeah, just so you guys know, I've been temperature checked. I've had my hand sanitized to the front runner. They're very serious about it. She said to me I was cool. I don't know if she meant my temperature or just me. It must be your temperature. Get it, Rana. I'm loving you already. So <laughs> let's take your mask off. We're going to keep our we're going to keep our social distance if that's okay. Thanks for saying you can help me out. What do you think I need? You, you've got an idea of what I'm trying to achieve here. Yes, I've received your brief, and I've got just the right stuff for you. I'm going to show you how we can make your camping life and experience a lot easier so i might actually survive this thing you're going to Otherwise, survive it? it could be my one and only 30-day adventure trip where do we start I mean, what's crucial and stuff like this what's essential look there's a lot of things that's essential it all depends what you want to do in that so we've got to decide you know let's start with the basic stuff for the beginning and then we can expand from there because I imagine, I'm just looking downstairs, you could spend a lot of money catching yourself oh, up. Yes. I mean, like, the, the, this is endless. But yes. I think what's, import, what's important here, as a first-time guy, it's great that you guys have understood that. Let's not break the bank here. What is a, a basic setup that's going to make your trip enjoyable? Well, a basic setup will be your roof rack. And then uh, you're going to stay 
outside. So to make it easier, we've got a very nice tent available, uh, which I'll show you now, where you, your doggies, everybody can fit in, and it will really make your life a lot easier. I'm assuming this is this, the, the rooftop, the rooftop this tent. Is because it. I was going to say, I mean, we, we've gone caravanning years ago with my folks, and it was always a mission, we're setting the tents and stuff up. Having this thing mounted, is this going on the roof of the, the car, yes. I assume, above the cab? Yes, we're going to move, in, in this case, we're going to mount it on top of the cab with a quick release mount. Okay. So should you want to take it off, let's say you end up in a space, you've got to go dunes and side tilts and that, not always good. Center yeah. of gravity, keep it as low as possible. The tent can come off easy. Quick release. Oh, wow. Off. Okay. So one person each side. Very, very it's very cool. light, 43 kilos, 2.2 2 wow. meters long, 1.4 wide. And, pl and plenty, of, plenty of space as well. Yes. And this is our new tent. I'm going to help you with a new one for yeah. this trip. It's got extra ventilation on the top. It's adjustable. And you can keep the flies uh, and hohoikis out in the bush. And keep the dogs in. And the dogs in. <laughs> Rainer, it's unbelievable. I'm, I'm going to ask you for, for price, because I think this is quite important. Yes. What does something like this cost? This is 12100 yeah. That is a tent alone. Yeah. And then the quick and release then... mount, and obviously some labor. And that excludes your rack. We first have to see what vehicle you've got, and then we'll give you a suitable rack, not give. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Show you the suitable rack to use. For but the, that sounds super affordable because you think about it, it means you go buy a caravan or to go book into B&Bs. If this is your way of life, you can commit to something like this and it actually makes adventuring really affordable. Very, very. And um, this comes with a warning, this whole trip to you. As dijo habait, you're going to be back and you're going to want more. As you'll see during this adventure, Front Runner kitted me out with a lot more than just a rooftop tent. And Reno, he was crucial in bringing all the elements together. While I was up in Joburg, he set up a meeting for me with a bunch of cool guys. Heading out on a road trip, 30 days, November, South African summer and heat. It's going to be hard to not only keep myself cool, but also my food cool. Apparently, Johan from Snowmaster reckons he's got the ultimate solution for me. Hi, how are you doing, Bianca? Fine, and you? I'm good, thank you. Bianca, um, Johan, do you know him? Yes, is he the Is he the boss? No, he's not a boss. Okay, because uh, he said to me he is the boss and he says he makes the best coffee. Is that true? Well, I don't think he can make the best coffee, but I think one of our nice ladies will make the best coffee for you. So where do I find him? You can find him in the coffee shop. I, this is amazing. Thanks, babe. I can't believe I'm, I, I thought I was coming to get like fridge and freezer and instead I'm in a store that has literally anything and everything you can imagine um, so much more than oh hang on I'm seeing something nice here I'm seeing Segafredo now listen I'm, I'm serious he did tell me that I must come for the best coffee I was made a joke I said listen I'm giving you a week you can find the right beans but uh, it looks like he's got the right beans Johan how's it how's it, yeah, it are you guys good yeah awesome yeah. happy to see you is this my yeah. coffee that's your sir your name is on you it. You did tell me that you do make the best coffee. And I told no, you we, our ladies are doing that. Sorry, not me. They actually said that in the front. Bianca said, oh, no, 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 he can't make coffee, but our <laughs> ladies can. So at least we're all on the same page. <laughs> Cheers. Yo, I'm so used to having to buffalo every drink I drink, but this is coffee, so my mates won't nail me. This is very good. I am um, I'm a little bit surprised. I'm not going to lie. I didn't expect to come to Snowmaster and walk into a store that looks like this. I thought there's gonna be a couple of fridges and freezers and that's what you guys do. Yeah, you've got a flipping cool coffee shop. It wasn't always like that. What was the whole thought process behind that? No, the thing is, and Ashley's dad, he started the business, Shane Bennett. And um, he started the business in the sense of only 12 volt. That was his, you wanna go into the market, a lot of guys says you're crazy and he did it. And with all the years, they add more products like the ice machines, unaccounted, 220 volt products were involved. We add some other products in here, and that also helped us to get the ladies into our shop. Mm. Yes, it was a man's world, but we've got these other things like ice machines, unaccounted by fridges. What does the public want? Not what your, what your reps is want. That, it's your wife, eh? You're gonna, no, it's you, not you, my you wife. Better, it's not my you're wife. You're going to be in big cuck. Oh. I know it's not you. <laughs> So uh, I think that is why we, with the products we've got, is what the customer, what the man in the street wants, or the lady in the street wants. And we listen to them and we try to get the product and bring it in. Well, how are you guys going to help me from a Snowmaster perspective? Because, I mean, the dog thing is a big thing for me because I'm... I'm I know, I, I, I know. Yeah, I know. I've you've got, got same house. beautiful well. pit bull wrapped in a pink duvet that you showed me. It's yeah. very, very special. Um, 
No, I'm like, I cook for my dogs and I pre-pack frozen food and I want to take that sort of stuff on, on route. So what can we look at? The only thing we can do for you is keep your bills cold and your food for your dogs. These 12 volt, 24 volt and 220 volt compressors are built specially for rough and toughness. Now I see there are two compartments here. Is it split so one's freezer and one's fridge or? Yes. But you can choose? You can choose. This is fridge, freezer, freezer, fridge of both compartments goes down to minus 22. While you're driving, you can see your temperature in your left hand side compartment, yep. on the right hand side. You can do anything from this. Incredible. Right. We're obviously documenting this. We're putting drones up, cameras, and one thing you know if you do play with cameras and drones, batteries never flip and last. How am I going to charge in the bush? There was a real concern for me. Rainer from Intervolt came aboard and he's going to help us out. You're going to have to explain this to me because we all know batteries and that's yes. what's in our car, but this is very different because does this link up to that? How, how does Intervolt work? Okay, so it's actually a very fairly simple system. It's you plug and play and it, it will charge your auxiliary battery. So it basically runs, it charges from your alternator to your gel battery or your glass lead battery at the rear. and keeps your, your uh, auxiliary battery fully charged at so, all times. So let me understand this. So I'm going to have the car battery remains a car battery and yes. then there's a secondary battery unit, yes. which can be any size, to, any depending size, on what yes. my needs are. Yes. So how does how does that intervolt system manage that process? I mean, is it, do I have to be checking what I'm doing all the day? Or please tell me no. No, so the, the, what's quite nice about the system, you can install it anywhere in your vehicle. It's the only system in South Africa that can actually go up to 85 degrees and still constantly charging. Uh, the, other, all the other systems were manufactured in Europe, so that it's got for their yeah. conditions. So you can even install this. It's one of the only ones you can actually install under the hood of your vehicle, where you can actually, uh, it can manage the temperature. So then what it has got a little screen that you uh, put in front of your vehicle. Okay, so, so, is that, so I could put that inside the car on my dash? Yeah. Yes. So you can put it anywhere on your dash uh, where it's visible for you and it will tell you where your battery is at the moment, what it's charging at, what the voltage is of your battery. So it's easy to monitor it or you can put it on the back of your battery box. So when you're at your battery boxes, you can see that the batteries are actually charging. I'm worried about ruining my batteries when I'm charging because I've heard about that. Sometimes yes. guys buy these systems and it's not charging in the right way. Yes. So your laptop battery suddenly you need new laptop. Is that a real thing or is this just a myth that I've uh, yes, picked up the, on? Yes, there, there is ways of it, it could happen. Um, that's usually when the people are, use the wrong equipment. But with front runners technology on their boxes and the, the right correct dual battery system, uh, with this charger, you will never have those, those type of issues. What's nice about this is it will, it will never overcharge because it will go into a float so, mode. So it's doing maintenance yes, of the battery yes, as well. Yes. So it's, it's maintenance free. Right, so we know Rainer from Intervolt sorts us out with this unit. Jason's busy. I don't know, Jason, what are you doing? You look busy, which is yes. good. Um, so basically putting uh, the Intervolt into a portable battery pack. Um, so you can put it in the back of a vehicle. You've got your multiple points. Uh, you can plug fridges in, USB, whatever you need. So the battery is all included in this one unit. So you, you could literally mount this anywhere you wanted to. Anywhere you like, yeah. But I like the thing you said, portable. I'm quite charged up for this trip. It's such a terrible joke. You guys are giving me awesome ideas in terms of places I should visit and see. Um, and I'm thinking any great adventure epic expedition it needs a good name now I've got a couple of ideas in mind but I thought maybe you guys could help me out let's see what you can come up with no true road trip through South Africa would be complete without visiting the Karoo and that is certainly my intention when I do get on the road on the 1st of November but I've got a good taste for the Karoo in the heart of Pretoria a really cool spot called Karoo Cafe um, I even had some uh, Karoo coffee I call it mood coffee and I can feel the buzz. Great spot. Um, listen, thank you guys for um, your suggestions for what to call my epic road trip. Uh, Sean Trenry absolutely loved vagabonding. Really, really cool. Um, my good friend in the States, Clifford. Robert's on the road. Very nice. Hope you're having a good time over there as well. I like that. Everton Bowers. This for me was probably quite appropriate going with COVID operation. It certainly sums up the times we're living in right now. Um, Willis. Matthew, I don't know what you're trying to say. I don't know if this is meant to refer to my trip, because Villas I know means wild. Sounds about right. Uh, and then my good mate Peter has said, on the road to nowhere. Peter, you're talking about my road trip, I hope, and not my personal life. But anyway, there were two that I really, really loved. Um, Janine, good mate of mine from school, suggested I go with the term solo mission, soul. 
and that really encapsulates what this road trip is all about. And then Ros, unbelievable. Freedomfinders.za. You need to trademark that because I think it is absolutely brilliant. But I've decided to go with something completely personal. Uh, when we were growing up, going on road trips, we'd always ask my mom where we're going and her response was standard. There and back to see how far it is. And she would not budge. She would never let away the secret. So I've decided to call this epic adventure just to see how far it is. Because you know, at the end of the day, it's never about the destination. We should learn to enjoy how we get to that end point. And I do. I just want to go there just to see how far it is. Just to see what is there. And just to enjoy a very unique experience. I gave my mates at Sharpline Graphics um, the name. I told them I'm taking my three dogs with me. And asked them if they could come up with a, a logo, with a graphic. Talk about unbelievable turnaround time. One day later, this is what they presented. I can't wait to share it with you. And what do you guys think? It looks so flippin' cool. I love they've even got the three dogs involved. So seriously, Dave and Chris, epic job on that. But they've gone even further because now they've given us branding for the vehicle. They've given us license to stickers as well as stickers that we can hand out on the trip. And I think that is awesome in telling the Just to See How Far It Is story and to get it out there because it is going to be a great adventure. Being based in Port Elizabeth, which of course is also the home of Isuzu, meant that the fitment would need to happen down there. Rainer called in a couple of favours. Hitech Batteries agreed to supply us with the auxiliary battery which would run our power unit. And he hooked us up with George and Rainer at LA Sport, who agreed to look after all of the fitment, transforming our capable Isuzu D-Max into an overlanding pickup. So you're gonna laugh, this has been my biggest stress. Is my surfboard gonna fit in? It's a moment of truth. We we're meant to rack it on the top, but there just wasn't enough space. So uh, we're gonna get a side mounted rack and get it fitted by uh, the LA Sport guys down in George by the looks of things. But uh, I'm planning on surfing in Vic Bay, which is before we get to George. So the board doesn't fit, yeah, the dogs are staying behind. No, just kidding. The guys are frantically working to get this whole thing done. So what needs to happen here is this board has to fit. Please, baby, please. You see? The board fits. Check. Are you happy now? Yeah. Uh, are you happy now? I can go on holiday. <laughs> and I've said a few times now that I've got absolutely no idea what I'm doing, but yet here I'm sitting with the guys at LS Sport trying to tell them how to do their job because Marius knows it all, apparently. So this is the this is the debate. Imagine that this is the fridge. You guys would put it like that, correct? That's how you would mount it? Yeah, it's a rule of thumb, yes. Sir. And Pupol over here is saying, no, 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 he wants to put it sideways. Why is that doff? No, not really. You know, as you, you know, there's specific ways of doing stuff, but that's the nice thing about this. It's each to their own. What's going to work for me is not necessarily going to work for you. So we can, if it's going to uh, suit your purpose better, then, then we can change it that way. But you were saying to me the cool thing about having a gel on the side, yeah. is that I've got that awning. You've got the awning on the side, on your passenger side. When you pull off and you stop along the road, you're out of the way, out of traffic, you'll be on the left hand side. So you'll be parking on this side. If you need to take the rest, pull up your chairs, everything in the back, you will still be safe. And you can still reach for your drinks and everything without getting in the way of traffic or anything. See, it's not your first time, eh? No, it's not my first time. <laughs> <laughs> Rainer, how long have you guys been doing this? Yeah, Alex Bordier has been here since, I think, 2009. So, yeah, this will be our, our 11th year. Everyone seems to be really chilled in this industry, like wanting to help each other out. I must say, it's a kind of relaxed atmosphere, you know, doctors coming to get away from being a doctor and yeah. focus on his hobby, which is his vehicle. So yeah, it is quite a relaxed atmosphere, but guys can get things about their vehicles. So <laughs> it's not always the case of just being relaxed and everybody feeling and happy. But yeah, if you look at what we do, it does take a team to, to do this course. Like the old saying goes, two heads are better than one, so yeah, it definitely helps. Is this kind of the normal build that you would do for people that want to be overlanding? That, yeah, that, that also, like I said, differ from, from person to person. Um, for overlanding, yeah, this is, this is quite the norm, doing a canopy, a roof rack, and all the stuff that you can, that you can do. Because you must remember, if you go overlanding and you go out there, you have to take everything with you. So the, the basic idea is to get as, many, you know, as much stuff in it um, to help you go where, where you're going and help you there. And so, you, so you have the basics, you know, roof rack, canopies, battery systems, fridges. So yeah, so this is quite quite the norm. It's been quite a challenging build. 
What's been your biggest stress point? Time, I would think, getting everything done. Uh, usually these canopy stakes take two, four weeks um, to build and then get it here. You know, Korea takes a few days. That is one of the was one of the big challenges and getting your surfboard fit is that just a I'm taking. Seriously, I just want to say thank you again because that canopy job was a bit of a miracle because it came down, I don't know how you got it done. I mean, that literally was like four days and a canopy arrived from Rhino Man, but then we had to color code it. I mean, have you have you seen a turnaround like that before, ever? Uh, when it comes to Rhino, especially with getting something organized and done, uh, you really pull, you really pulls out, uh, like you say, the rabbit out of the hat. Yeah. He's always the one who always, if you want somebody to organize something, you'll ask Rhino and it will happen. But um, really, honestly, LA Sports, thank you. You guys have done a great, a great job. It's been yeah, good fun. It's a, it's a big pleasure being part of, part of the It's just a little overwhelming to be honest. I um, I went to go have a look at the car now. It looks freaking amazing. Like seriously, it looks. Um, I see the number of people that have um, asses that have worked crazy, doing mad things, pulling miracles to make what was an idea. Um, a reality and you know it's like you know, they're good people out there and they really are I think the idea of going on a trip like this is to be excited about it um, because you're packing and you're planning and you're doing it uh, couple of weeks in advance you know I'm cramming all of that so uh, yeah I guess once I'm on the road um, I'll be able to reconnect with what was the idea of unlocking and escaping because at the moment I actually just want to escape <laughs> from planning all of this sort of stuff because it's yeah, it's pretty heavy you know all the best plans don't always go to plan and that apparently is life I don't have the car that's the reality. I'm only collecting it um, <laughs> later today and we leave uh, in the morning. Little choppers. Hey, should we go? Let's go. Do you want to go? Mila? Jamie? Let's go. Let's go. So Johanna Snowmaster said um, the remote allows me to control everything from, uh, from the driver's seat and it's also got built-in alarms. So if I haven't closed the door properly or it's not connected properly, it's going to be We've literally just left home. I checked it before we left, it was working. Now it's beeping and nothing's coming on. So, first stop, one kilometer from home. That socket is cuck. Now it's gone off again. Yeah, it's, it's useless. Boom, <laughs>